you know, you can obviously, everyone remembers the first game of the season up at the Emirates. Brilliant game to watch. A lot of water flowed under the bridge. <laughs> both sides. How, in your mind, are the two teams challenged? Oh, I can't say too much about Arsenal. Um, as it was, um, the start is like um, it is in a, in, in an idle world, a free flowing start. Yeah? So, not perfectly organized um, and no bad experience together. Um, as full of confidence as possible after a, a pre season, we were all convinced about that we did the right things. And um, um, yeah, did we have to? Probably the, the the Barcelona game not too long was not too long ago, eh? so it was another nice game in London. So um, completely optimistic. That's um, how it is. And then a season is coming up, and um, yeah. Meanwhile, we have um, a few already a few um, bad moments together. So that's how it is. So that that of course changed, and it's not that um, uh, it doesn't feel that. That free flowing anymore, but that's how seasons are. Eh? So in a, maybe only one team who has exactly the same feeling still. Um, that's Chelsea, and all the rest is uh, had better or, or worse moments in the season. And, and obviously, um, we have this. Meanwhile, this lack of of consistency. What? Yeah, um, we cannot ignore it eh? um, because we, we we were involved in the games. So and that's the the thing we have to do now. So it's not too important to compare um, um, the start of the season with this moment, but it's obviously different. So that's how it, that's how it always is. So we, if you want, you can always uh, already looking forward to the start of the next season because it will be the same feeling. Yeah? And uh, um, whatever happens in this season, so that's that's the thing. But now um, we are now. Um, in the middle of the season, and um, yeah, we thought it makes sense when we try to deliver um, again on Saturday. There's a, a meeting of the IFAB ongoing. Um, one of the proposals we put forward is that perhaps only captains should be like, able to speak to the match official in order to increase discipline as a manager. Uh, what? <laughs> the, who, what, the, yeah. the um, International Football Association board uh, meeting and one of the proposals being put, put forward is that during a game only team captains should be able to speak to the referee. Mm -hmm. I think that's kind. That's that's already kind of a rule. We, 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 we are, when we are before the game in the in the in the um, refs. Um, dressing room and uh, introduce us in the rules and what he thinks about the game. It's always that he says to the captain, yes, and you can, if something is uh, any issues in the game, then you can come to me and then, uh, we can talk about it. So that's clear. But I think in a, in a situation when a player, yeah, I don't know how why players should talk to the to the ref, but it, probably it happens. So how we do it from from the sideline, it happens. But it's, I think it uh, makes sense. But I thought it's already it's already kind of a rule. How will you make it more strict? I have no idea. Uh, so it's always yellow card. Then when when one player is saying something, not sure that it makes too much sense. I thought that works uh, pretty well in, in, in the moment. So for my side, no need for a rule change. But uh, I'm not really in the. Uh, yeah, in the thing. Uh, just finally, from me on behalf of our friends at Sky Germany, um, they've been speaking to Dortmund today. Revealed that Mario Götze hasn't been able to uh, play due to metabolic disturbances. Um, what's this something you know? Have you been in touch with him? Um, and what has he made of the injury? If you have? Yes, we are in touch. We were always in touch with a lot of my former players. So in a situation like this, then of course we have a little exchange, a little messages, but it's um, still. Um, so he's, what can I say? Uh, now he knows the diagnosis, and now you have to uh, to, to work on um, on it and with it, and that's what he, what he's doing in the moment. That's nothing else to say about. So it's of course when we have message, then it's private, and nothing for public. But um, how with, yeah, not all, but a lot of my former players, um, I'm, I'm still in contact, and then we, we we talk about things like this. Yes. Um, just something that you mentioned there, I know sometimes it gets lost in translation. So you were talking about optimism and confidence at the start of the season. I know it's, it, it feels quite different now, maybe. Is that Because that's not something I would assume from you, that you wouldn't be anything other than confident and optimistic. So is there something different? Look, I'm not a clown, eh? even when few people think I am. So I'm not always 
laughing like crazy. I'm not always, I'm a complete, I said it, <laughs> a normal person. So means we all um, are influenced by the experience we make. So that, that's how it is. And how, how should I be in exactly the same mood uh, when I was in the beginning of the season, this is this is work now. But my job is that the, the players feel until the next game that there's a big chance that we can win it. And of course, but that's not with um, laughing the whole week and, and ignoring the problems you have. But, but the only thing I described was that at the beginning of the season, you, you, the season starts. It's the first impression you get, and the first impression of this season was spectacular. Well, it was a wonderful game. We made the, not the best start in the game. I mean, um, well. Bounced back in the game, we scored fantastic goals, we were already through, then we made it a little bit um, exciting again, so that was, a, maybe a few people will say that's a little bit like the season, uh, all in one game, but um, that was not clear in this moment that <laughs> it could happen, we were um, really happy that we, that we could beat a really strong side like Arsenal in their home ground and the last games we played against them uh, were always uh, kind of spectacular, the home game last year here was an was, uh, uh, intense and spectacular game. So maybe the next one will, will be similar, but um, we have only to think about um, what we, how we can use yeah, experience from last game, experience from the, from, from the, what was the, the game before, the Tottenham game, and all this stuff for this game. That's how our work um, is, because we cannot ignore the things that, that happen around, that's all. But I'm 100% optimistic again um, but I mean, I think about the, the, the Arsenal game on Saturday, but I cannot say that I'm exactly in the same mood than I was in the beginning of the season. Um, you've mentioned goals, this competition, the match-up always seems to bring that number of goals for whatever reason. The one at the Emirates, uh, Philippe and uh, Roberto scored both the goals. Are they doing as much as you would like them to at the moment? Are they at that level that, that they were maybe back then? And Phil and Roberto. Sabino yeah. and yeah. yeah, okay. Um, yeah. In the Tottenham game, yes. In the Leicester game, no. Pretty simple. So um, that's that's how it is. Um, and it's not about. It, uh, I said it, um, and, and because I, it's the truth. Um, the Leicester game was in this kind, in in this specific way, special. Um, there were really a lot of bad individual performances. That was uh, and that was the problem. <laughs> if you have that many um, players not on their usual level, and each Premier League game will be difficult. Especially this game was then difficult, and um, so we lost because of our because of our performance. And that's all. So, but it, it's uh, it's a week ago. And yeah, we have to do better, 100%. Not only Phil and Roberto, um, there were a few other players who, who have a lot of space to improve from this game. But it, how I said, it was not last year that we played really good. So we have to, to use the one thing, and if you want, and to use the other thing, and to go confident, as confident as possible in, the next, in this game. And for this, we, it's Anfield, it's our stadium. We have the last game we played here was outstanding good. It was fantastic, actually. And um, so we want to have this, this feeling again. And for this, that's what we're working for. All teams play well and play badly in this season. <laughs> and you've already indicated that. We know that. Was the worrying part of, of the game against Leicester how passive Liverpool were? And, where did, where did that come from? Because we're not used to seeing that from Liverpool. And what can you guard? What can you do to guard against it happening again? Oh, work on a pitch. That's how. That, that's the, 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 the life of a football of a football coach and manager. So that, that's how it is. So we, we we talk about the things. We work on it on the pitch and all that stuff. So, um, but I, I I know and we, I said it a few times. And we have to prove again. So. Um, unfortunately, because uh, we we were not good, and it was not to expect before the game that we will be that bad in the game against Leicester. So, but there are a lot of reasons why uh, why we played that bad, and um, that that's the thing. It's not being passive. I don't know. It it starts we, uh, we it starts with a with a set piece for for the long ball. Jamie Wadi had a second ball. Foul on Sadio, or probably after game, everybody saw, but throw in for them, first throw in, and 
difficult. Uh, it's difficult. You can whatever you have a kind of plan you have, you have to avoid these these balls against Leicester because when you let them throw the balls in the six yard box, that's a few of them are dangerous. So and obviously they felt immediately in this moment, yes, that's what we want. And obviously we felt the opposite. And we watched now analyze of course the game against um, the Leicester game against Man City. That looked a little bit not similar, but it looked like City was surprised. But in this moment, that's possible. But we couldn't be surprised because we knew about a City game and we knew about a situation that which changed at Leicester. But even then, we didn't we didn't perform. That's the truth. Sometimes, as a manager, you have to accept these things because you cannot change it. In, in the game, obviously, it, we, we tried everything again with system change, half time, blah blah blah, clear words, um, and and what we have to do. We didn't talk a lot about the first half because that was already the first half was already in the bin. So um, we have now to we, we we thought about the second half, and um, there would have been a lot of opportunities for us which we couldn't use because uh, again of the performance it was a little bit better but not um, good enough. That's all. I understand 100% that you all ask about this, but actually we made the analyze already, and for me it's already gone. I cannot keep it the whole the whole week in in, in my backpack, and 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 still I and Leicester, don't forget. So it's now Arsenal, and we had uh, a few sessions, um, important sessions, which we prepared the Arsenal game, which is from the whole style of play and and, and a lot of things. It, it, it's completely different. So. Yeah, but you need to you need to know about this, and you 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 need to to try to make it as difficult as possible for Arsenal um, to get something here, and that's a job to do. It is Arsenal this weekend. Your record against the top six clubs is better than anybody's, and that gives you a real opportunity to take the players. Have you, have you just been rousing them along this week to say, "Listen, come on, give me what you know you're capable of." No, because I think it's obvious um, that I didn't use these words, because I don't like to to talk about um, things like it. Like it's it's clear, no no game against a top flight, top team of the league was um, was easy, not one of them. It was always hard work, was highest intensity and all that stuff. But we we were until now um, always ready to um, to really to, to to perform. That's what we have to do, but not because we did against the other teams, only because um, Arsenal is here. It's a good football playing side, and we and we need to uh, we need to, to to bounce back. We need to to get the points to keep the points at, at Anfield. That's it. Not because we played. We cannot use the Arsenal of the first Arsenal game because it's really a lot of water under the bridge, eh? and uh, and uh, I cannot. I don't use usually the games against similar teams. It's the the the, the real preparation for this game, the specific. Arsenal game, and for this you use pictures from the last three, four games of Arsenal, and not um, from the longer past. How much do you expect players when they're on the pitch to recognise that things are going wrong, react to it, and influence things? Because on against Leicester, it didn't seem like, as you, as you said there, it didn't seem like they did recognise what was happening, what Leicester were doing. A different thing. So it's obviously, but what do you expect? What do I want? What do I want is yeah, that we that we if you want that we delete the last situation, start new, and come on, oh, that we strike back. That's that's what you what you want. Um, but actually, I saw a lot of times in my life, and, for, and, and even when I was involved as a player, and I was a real mentality player, so because I was not that good as a footballer, so my my strength was um, pushing um, a few teammates and all that stuff. But even. For me, it was not always possible. So that's um, that's the situation, and um, that's how I said. Then you try everything in the game to have influence from the sideline, to to give the right information that they can help each other and all that stuff. But at the end, we have to accept it didn't work. It didn't work out in this game. So, but of course, how? But in a in an ideal world, um, if the start is not good, yeah, then you start a little bit later, and then you are at, at uh, spot on at 100 percent. But it's not easy, so that's why it makes sense to be spot on from the first second, and um, that's what we try again on Saturday. You're obviously without Dolby, your, your captain against Leicester. So who who's pushing those players, their teammates, in that situation when you, you, you're not really captain who's who's weak in the game? Yeah, but we have these players. They, they they do it always in 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 different ways. Of course, Adam. Of course, Milly. Um, of course, Luke. Lucas Leva, that's that's always um, these three players for sure, and with different things. Usually, Roberto Firmino with his 
with his attitude, readiness, so you can give him always the ball. But in, in this game, yeah, the first ball, bound, jumped five yards away from his foot. What's that? So it started like this and it didn't get better uh, in the game. So he, could, he couldn't, um, obviously, uh, find a way back in a, in a, for a really good performance. But that, that, especially in this case, I have to say, okay, I don't know when it was last time, so what should I do now? That's a very good example. We go on him and tell him, did you see it? How can you do it? And all that stuff. Uh, I, it's, it's over. That's the only good thing. It's done, and now we have the chance to make it much better. But it's we have we have the players, and it's it's always like this. When you play bad, then this question comes up. If you play well, nobody asks for the player who puts the team. Um, that's how it is. So all good, but that was not the reason for not performing. <coughs> I think we were. You thought we had this problem, not being not physical enough, very often in this season. There's probably a, a series of games going back a few years where you'd say it's past the middle of the semi final. It's been some last week here. Aston Villa in the semi final was when? We were not physical enough, and yes, we have. No, no, I want to only try to understand. So, okay, it's not, it's not, it, it's not um, usual for us. Actually, I think we are usually we are clear, clean, not ugly challenges or whatever, but really physical. So, can you imagine that we run in the game, and now, and now, in this game, 121 kilometers? I was really surprised because I thought that was the best example for running. Obviously. 80% of the wrong ways because 121 kilometers in this game, he <laughs> played really bad performance. So that's that's physical, of course. I thought in the in the challenges, in the specific challenges, not not harder, not making foul or something, being close enough, being there, being ready for all that stuff. I'm not sure if physical was a 100% right word, but it's not a, it's not a general problem of us. It wasn't until now. So. In the five games we lost, we had only three yellow cards. And in my opinion, foul, playing foul is not being physical, more being kind of doesn't help usually. There are a few fouls, tactical fouls, but you need sometimes. That's um, why you usually get booked for it. But being harder than allowed, don't think it makes sense. So. I, I never, for, I never, I never forced my players for playing foul. Actually, so that's uh, we are always pretty fair. We are at always pretty fair team. So because I think we, we want even a challenge, we want to keep win the ball, not to break a leg. So that's uh, that makes it's hopefully sense. Again, when you lose, then that's completely normal that you ask for this. But being physical means being ready or being this legal aggressive means being ready to hurt yourself, not the other player. So and um, yeah. It's not that I'm in doubt about, but in this game, a lot of things came together, and that's why it was so bad. So, but um, how I said again, we, I know it's right to ask for it, but I can't ignore the, the game against Tottenham, which is three weeks ago, but was pretty much the same player uh, which played there, and um, they did really well. And now in this game, they didn't. So, we, should we doubt them in general? I don't think so. But we have to react because we uh, live in in the in a, in a Premier League. And we have to deliver every week, each week, not only sometimes. And being consistent is the most important thing in life when you have the quality to uh, to reach something. Because being inconsistent always lets you struggle. And that's the that's the problem and we have to work on it and that's what we do. Well, John is too soon for sure. Um, that will take time, and um, Deja we will see. He, he trained yes. Part of team training the day before yesterday. Yesterday full team training. So now we have to see how he uh, reacts on this, and um, he will be involved in training. If nothing, if nobody tells me anything different in in training again, and then um, we've, uh, we have to make a decision. So that's it. It's not. 
too long because he was he was out pretty much for four weeks, training three days. Ah, at the end, I have to make a decision. I'm not sure about. It. Do I really believe in um, putting people under pressure to to perform on the highest level now? It's always, but having a compet when I when I speak about the competition, I don't I don't um, really thought about that they put them under this kind of pressure. I only think because of the quality of another player, you have to deliver. Without I without, I have to tell it because so if I don't perform then. He can, so that's how it is. We have a few, we had a few um, injuries, too much, 100%. Yeah, and that's it. We have not a lot of opportunities to change. And if you win, it's easier to change things than when you, if you lose. Because um, after they have to put the responsibility, so the, the players from who played last night have said, now, OK, come on, we, um, we change it now uh, on three, four, five positions, um, what would be still possible, then um, I. I, I I take them out of responsibility and I put it on the shoulder of other players and say, come on, let me see if you can do it. So, um, yeah, so it, it's always good to have the, to have the, um, the choice uh, because then you can react on, on shape and, and form and all that stuff, but you see and saw in training, um, yeah, in this moment we don't have that big choice um, on, on uh, a few positions, not because the player were not there, but different reasons. So, for example, Ragnar Klavan was really ill. I, I said it already. Then, that's why, why um, Luke played against Tottenham and he played outstanding good against Tottenham. Made a really good game. So after Leicester, I think, um, Matt sometimes prepares me a little bit for the press conference and said, oh, yeah, uh, number six, maybe they will ask because number six is playing on centre half. Yeah. Uh, but the answer could be because he did it really well in a lot of games and it makes sense. Yes, did you perform outstanding good against Leicester? No, he didn't. So that's the situation. I always reason for it. It's not that I have no, that I don't want to change or things like this. But a week is not very long, but it's long enough to have different things uh, when the medical department comes in and you know, okay, now he cannot train and he's a little bit ill and he's that. So that's what we have to react on. No excuse. We were all the players were absolutely fit on the pitch against Leicester, but we didn't perform. So, but I thought we try again. No, no. Um, Daniel was ill, really, really ill again too, and um, uh, now he has a, a, a strain in the hip muscle. Eh? So um, it happened in, a, in, in the rehab session, and now we, it's not a, it's not the biggest one. It's very small, but keeps him out of normal training for probably another week. And uh, but in this week he can already train, but not team training. Thanks, guys.